Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes. Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, they're going to do it again for the 168-pound title, a matchup between champion Sakio Bika and Anthony Durrell. Now, understand, whenever you see rematches like this between two guys who are huge punchers, and I mean huge punchers, Durrell has something like an 80% KO ratio. Understand, when you see a fighter like Saki Obika with a greater than 50% KO ratio who has fought some of the better fighters out there, right? Guys who are hard to stop. Andre Ward, still unbeaten. Joe Calzaghe, still unbeaten. Sam Solomon, currently one of the holders of the middleweight title right? Even Lucien Boutte. I know Boutte has had chin problems in the past, but he's hard to catch up with, right? When a fighter fights that level of opposition and still has a greater than 50% knockout ratio, and when you realize that one of his knockouts, the Mendy KO, was actually erased from his record because of a disqualification, then you'll realize Saki Obik is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Now let's benefit from the outsized event that took place in the first fight, right? In the first fight, somehow, curiously, that first fight went the distance, right? I believe most of the world thinks that that first fight is just going to recreate itself in the second fight. I don't. The bet I'm recommending here, and understand this is dangerous, right? These bets have blown up on me in the past. This, in my opinion, is the most controversial betting option that I recommend here online. And it's to take both guys by KO. In other words, if someone doesn't get stopped or disqualified, you lose it all. Right, I'm expecting the kind of hard-hitting fight where, when they fight conventionally, as they did in the early rounds of the last time, Andre Durrell, excuse me, not Andre, Anthony Durrell will land hard shots up top. Right, understand, Durrell's a straighter puncher. Sakio Beak is a mid-range hooker. Right, so Durrell's going to land the harder, cleaner shots up top. He dropped Bika in the middle of their first fight. Right, dropped him. But understand, Bika is the better fighter inside. Bika was landing devastating body punches on Anthony Durrell, especially in the 11th round of their first fight. I've posted a link to the video of that 11th round on my channel page. Right now when you realize that these guys are both big hitters, when you realize that both of these guys see themselves as punchers, right? Neither guy was doing a lot in my opinion to avoid getting hit in the first fight. Right? Both guys were swinging for the fences. And when you realize that both guys firmly believe that they have the punch to take the other guy out, right? Durrell, of course, got a knockdown in the first fight. Bika, of course, knows that in the 11th round and the beginning of the 12th round, he was landing some big punches on Anthony Durrell. And when you realize that Bika is a guy who has been disqualified before the Mendy fight and who had a point deducted in the first fight and who pushes the line. In other words, 
he's landing a lot of shots right on the belt line. In other words, he's a guy who swings hard, isn't particularly accurate, will go for your body, and will push the envelope. Some of these punches are borderline. Some of these punches are low. Right? And he's aggressive. In other words, after, after a ref says, hey, man, pick him up, Bika will go right back to throwing punches in the same area. When you add all of that up and when you include the fact that they're fighting at the StubHub Center, understand every venue has its own eccentricities. Right? In Germany, for example, the crowd really likes precision. Right? And the crowd is well behaved. So you'll watch a German fight and they'll appreciate a good jab. Right? Felix Sturm is the man for them. Vladimir Klitschko is the man for them. Right? You go to the UK. Right? And the UK likes theater. So the ring entrance is huge. Right? It's huge. Right? The people are, you know, screaming. They're passionate. The fighters get into it. Right? UK fans don't want to see a boring fight. They want to see volume. They want to see activity. Not a great, crisp, clean, precise jab. They want to see volume and some noise. The StubHub Center. Southern California. Their kind of fight was the fight that took place, the Robert Guerrero last fight. Right? This is a crowd that doesn't like guys who work a back foot. Right? I would call the StubHub Center a place where the crowd will literally boo you. They'll boo you if it looks like you're running too much around the ring. Right? I think these guys are going to come in. They're going to want to throw bombs. I think the crowd is going to be into the idea of them throwing bombs. I think the fighters are going to get egged on. I think somebody is going to get stopped in this fight. Let me just say this, though. Let's talk about how risky this is. I've made this prediction on other fights. Recently, the Brandon Rios-Diego Chavez fight. Now, it worked out. But if you followed me on this bet, you were sweating. Right? The beginning of the fight looked like that fight wasn't going to go five rounds. Right? Both guys met in the middle of the ring. They emptied the gun. Then weird things started happening. Right? Uh, Diego Chavez looked great on his back foot. I'll give him that in the middle of the fight. But then, fouling started happening. This was the fight where Diego Chavez tries to lace Brandon Rios. This was the fight where Diego Chavez gets Rios in a headlock and then drops to the canvas. This was the fight where the referee finally saw enough and disqualified Diego Chavez. Now, don't get me wrong. I was happy for the disqualification, right? I'm not going to give any money back to the casino, right? You win the bet, read the rules for your casino. But out here, you win the bet if there's a KO or a disqualification, right? But just understand that a fighter like Diego Chavez can actually slow down the pace of a fight and can actually give himself an opportunity to survive in the fight. He was getting hit with brutal body shots by doing things like the takedown move that literally buys a fighter something like 20 seconds. Understand, the fighters go to the canvas, right? Then, you know, people are like, what's going on here? Then, of course, the fighters get off the canvas the referee will then go over to the fighter who was thrown to the canvas and will say, hey, are you all right? Then the ref will berate both fighters or berate one fighter and say, look, you do this again, I'm going to disqualify you. Right? By the time the referee gets the fighters back together, 
the guy who was in danger of getting stopped, who was getting hit with body shots, who needed a way out, has somehow bought himself 15, 20 seconds. Not only that, the guy who he threw down to the canvas, who was looking good in the fight, that guy might be banged up, right? He's just been tackled and thrown to the canvas, right? If he hits an elbow on the canvas or he falls funny or something like that, you know, that could impact his power, right? So understand, that fight, we were lucky to win it. That fight easily could have gone the distance because, in my opinion, of tactics a little bit outside the lines, right? Another fight, I didn't call this fight as, you know, uh, both guys by KO, but another fight where a KO could have resulted was that Calzaghi Bernard Hopkins fight, right? Hopkins is buying time in that fight. Calzaghi brushes him below the uh, waist. Hopkins, of course, claims he's a victim of a low blow. You know the rules in boxing. They'll then give you five minutes. If you're a savvy fighter and you're dealing with a southpaw who's throwing all kind of volume and hand speed at you, and if you're tired and you can't keep up with the young lion, Wow, I'll take the five minutes. You know, wow, I actually get a break in the later rounds? Above and beyond the break between rounds? Sometimes also you get these fighters who, you know, because of courage, heart, lunacy, will literally push themselves to the outer limits just to finish the fight. I thought Santana yesterday was doing that against Lamont Peterson. I thought Shannon Briggs did that against Vitaly Klitschko. I thought there Klitschko was going to win by KO. You know the rest. Klitschko throws the kitchen sink at Shannon Briggs, who somehow stays upright. I lost on that fight. Understand, that's the risk involved. You could watch a fight where a guy dominates. But then the other guy is hanging around. The other guy, the other guy is taking the punishment. Even when we're past the point of no return, where you know one fighter clearly has no shot of winning the fight. I thought the Santana fight yesterday, you know, going into the ninth round, tenth round, you knew he had no shot of winning the fight. But the guy was taking all kinds of punishment until finally. A member of the New York State Athletic Commission hopped on the ring apron and went like this. Sometimes that's what it takes. Well, here, I'm just here to tell you, these guys hit so hard. And because of the familiarity and the lack of defense, right? Neither guy is a great defensive fighter, right? Because of the lack of defense, because of the egos involved, because of the crowd involved, because Beak as a mid-range hooker is hard to block, and because I don't think Anthony Durrell is going to know how to block the body shots, because these guys now know the angles at which the other guy is throwing punches, right? Beaker had a problem with that straight right hand. Right? And so you can imagine they're going to convince themselves that they can make the adjustments while delivering their own punishment. Their fight styles are too different. One guy's throwing straight punches up top, the other guy's throwing hooks to the body. I'm expecting an action-packed fight that does not go the distance. Right? Neither guy is big on lateral movement. Right? The bet I'm recommending is both guys by KO. Get yourself the full 12 rounds. Let me just call out and throw a red flag on a betting outfit right now. You need to shop around for bets. Understand right now Betfair in the UK is offering Saki Obika by KO at 6 to 4 odds. They're offering Saki Obika by KO at, uh, by decision also at 6 to 4 odds. If you shop around town, you're going to find out that there are some betting outfits right now that are offering you Saki Obika simply to win the fight at 7 to 4 rods. You're getting a better rate of return. Right? Look at the odds. Just know your primary bet should be 
both guys by KO. I'm not going to fool around with over-unders. I thought a lot of action took place in the first fight after the ninth round. Right? So I like both guys by KO. I think it's a blessing because Saki Obika, a big puncher, has been in against Marco Antonio Paraben, a hard guy to stop. That fight went the distance. Then, of course, his fight against Andre Durrell went the distance. Right? Excuse me. Anthony Durrell, the first fight, went the distance. I think that's why the odds are so reasonable here. So I like both guys by KO, but shop around. If the casino isn't going to give you an appreciable premium for the KO prop on Bika, in other words, if Bika by KO is going off at a plus 175, and Bika to win the fight is going off at a plus 175 or a plus 170, then just take Bika to win the fight, right? You'll have the KO prop folded into the Bika to win, right? They sh the casino should be paying you a premium for taking the risk on the KO prop, right? Hope I haven't confused you too much. Just understand, I don't think this fight goes the distance. I'm expecting the bullets to fly. Neither guy is defensively gifted. Both guys now are more familiar with the other. Both guys had their moments in the first fight where they hurt the other. I thought Anthony Durrell faded stamina-wise in that first fight. I'd question his stamina. Right? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.